I'm excited to be a welcome on one of the top 22 riding prospects in Perry Smith Jr. What's going on today, bro? It's going great, going great. For sure, yeah. man. Well, I mean, you're part of the 2022 class, which means it's now been a couple of weeks that coaches can start calling you. What's this past couple of weeks been like? It's been crazy. A lot of co- a lot of college coaches have been calling. They've been showing a lot of interest in me. And I'm very blessed to have that opportunity. Absolutely. And let's talk about some of the schools you have. I mean, LSU's obviously in there, DePaul, Nebraska, you've been pulling a lot recently. Just take us through some of the schools that's been recruiting you the hardest. Texas a and South Carolina, and Marquette have been – they've been contacting me the most. Um, Texas a and they want me to come right in because they really do – they think I really fit their program. So does Marquette. And they really have been trusting into me. South Carolina, they also, they also love me too. They, they've been showing a lot of interest. They want to make sure I stay in state. In state. And – they all been we all been building a relationship with the coaches, and they they really they really been showing a lot of interest in me and showing me that you know you can come in and play. That's big time. Let's talk about some of the schools a little bit more. Obviously, South Carolina staying close to home. Is this something that would be interesting to you? Would you like to possibly stay somewhere near home? Yes, sir. I would like to stay somewhere home, but I'm all about relationships. So, who whatever coach I have the best relationship with, that's where I'm going to go. And whatever coach, you know, he's pulling at me the hardest. And I, whatever coach I feel like has the best interest in mind for me, that's where I plan on going. That's big time. And I said some of the schools that have offered you, someone like an LSU and some of the schools out there, obviously in the country, are dealing with some stuff off the court. When you look at the FBI investigation, just stuff that obviously has either happened in the past or is happening today. When you see a program dealing with that stuff, what goes through your mind as a prospect? What kind of goes through my mind is, you know, I trust the coaches, mm-hmm. so like when I when I see stuff like that happen, I trust that the coaches are doing right by their players. Everything's going well around them. Mm-hmm. Um, I really don't try to get into all that, but I, I'm really big on you know if I if I know your heart, then I know you you're gonna do right. That's awesome, man. And you talk about some of those schools. Someone like Marquette is a school that has gotten a lot more traction. I think someone like also Marcus Howard is out there. Brought a lot more spotlight on them. Also seeing with D. Wade, Jimmy Butler, guys like that coming from there. And we see they just put together an elite top 25 recruiting class. How much more attracting is it seeing the players they put in the NBA and now seeing them pull in top 100 talents? It's very attractive because it shows that they can put people in the league mm-hmm. and that you can come basically from anywhere. And there's Coach Wujo is doing a great job with putting players in the league and really coaching them hard and really – making them pros while they're there at Marquette. So I really like what they're doing. It's very attractive of what they're doing with their players and how they develop them. Another school you said obviously was Texas A&M. They also have been pulling in a lot of big-time talent, especially now. I mean, obviously, Jackson moved up to the 2020 class, but having guys like him, having Manny, having a lot of big-time players as well, What's your? do you have a relationship with any of those guys? No, sir. I, I do not have a relationship with none of the players. I just have a relationship with the coaches. I've been talking to them. Um, I, I know a couple of targets that they're trying to get. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I've just been building a relationship with the coaches, just been talking to them daily. I haven't really been getting into, like, who they're recruiting or nothing like that. I just try to build a one-on-one relationship with them. No doubt. And I know one thing that obviously goes through a lot of recruits' minds is, obviously, each school has the main plan, the backup plan, in case maybe you do not go there. And they ha- they're also recruiting other positions. How much more kind of thought does that give you when you look at school also having other positions in terms of how quickly you want to commit someday? When I look at positions, I kind of look at, like, who they're bringing in, like, if the guards, like, are they a selfish guard or they're a pass-first guard or they're a playmaking guard. So that does that does play a role in me going to the school too. But – I trust I trust that the coaches would bring in bring in a bring in whoever they bring in, they would be a guard that's gonna come in. They're going they're gonna get theirs, but they're gonna also help the team win. And I'm all about winning. So that does play a big role in who they get because I, I I love winning and whatever we have to do to win, whoever they get to win, that's what I'm all in for. That's big time and take us to that first night. Obviously, as I said, a couple of weeks ago coach could start calling you. What was that night? What was that first day like having coaches call you? The first night it was so surprising because I, I I didn't know it was gonna be like that. Mm-hmm. I was like, maybe they're gonna call me tomorrow. But that night 
I got my first call was calls in Charleston. They was like, we're gonna make sure we get the first one. They was right at twelve o'clock. Mm-hmm. And a couple more schools, they were sending me videos and stuff like that. It it was a great experience and I'm just blessed for that opportunity also. Cause not everybody gets that opportunity. That's another thing I know a lot of guys are kind of surprised by. I mean, I think the guys probably ranked in the top twenty, top thirty knew that calls would be coming in, but I think a lot of guys were also, like you said, kind of taken by surprise of how much interest you guys got. I mean, wh- how did you kind of deal with that throughout that first day, having your phone just keep vibrating, keep going off? It motivated me. It made me want to get into – it made me want to work harder, actually. It made me want to keep getting that college coach's attention because, you know, you can, you can also lose a scholarship too. So it made me want to just keep working and gain more college attention and be that guy that, you know, everybody wants to have on their team. What time was your first call at? 12 o'clock. Right at 12 o'clock. Yes, sir. (laughs) Did you get much sleep that night? I tried. I tried, but I was like, (laughs) I got to stay. I got to see who's going to hit me up because Mm -hmm. um, Texas A&M and Texas A&M, actually Texas A&M and Calls of Charleston were the first ones to hit me up. Okay. And, yeah, I, I tried to stay as much. I tried to stay up as much as possible. Then NC State called also. Mm-hmm. So I just tried to stay up to see if there was going to be more, and there certainly was more in the morning. And so we've talked about a lot of schools that have offered you right now, but you're going to keep pulling in more and more offers throughout the next couple of weeks, throughout the next couple of years. Who else are some of the schools that you think are heavily interested in you that have been talking to you a lot but have yet to extend the offer to you? South Carolina is the most mm-hmm. – it's, it's the one that has been talking to me the most that hasn't offered yet. NC State, they send mail in every day. Mm-hmm. Wake Forest, I talk to them every other day. And those those are the three schools who, who I think they're going to offer eventually. Yeah. But I just got to keep working and grinding, and those offers will come. And you said Wake Forest. They're a school that's obviously going through a lot of change right now, new coaching staff. I mean, what what's Coach Forbes like? How do you like him as a coach? Or just overall, who's he like? He's a great guy. Um, he He believes in defense and – I really, I really think that that he's a um, great coach to be around. He's a mentor, and he just overall cares for his players. He'll go to bat for his players over anything. You have listed now a lot of schools that are obviously Power Five kind of conference schools. When you come down to your recruiting process, is being a part of a Power Five conference, going to a high major school, a priority to you? No, sir. It's not a priority to me because I want to go to somewhere – that even if a mid-major school, if a mid-major coach is coming at me hard and he's showing me, he's showing me love that I spoke, like that he's showing me that he really cares about me and he's showing me that I fit his program and we have a great relationship, then I will go to that school along with HBCUs too. If we have a great relationship, I will go there too. I just, I'm just big on, you know, how, how do me and you have a relationship and how, how do I see your heart and what do you plan on doing for me in the future or what do you plan on like how are you going to develop me in the future for my long-term goal which is going to the NBA as you just mentioned you would even possibly inter- be interested in HBCU school we know all the trend going on with that right now with an HBCU school you're going to have an opportunity to see what happens with the 2021 class in terms of who actually ends up going to one how appealing though would it be to potentially go to an HBCU for you it would be it would be great for me because my dad went to HBCU. He went to South Carolina State. Um, so, you know, the D one schools. Mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like if some people commit in the twenty twenty one class, if you get one five star commit, they'll become a high major school. Some of them become high major. Um, so a school like Howard, they'll become high major. So I think that they will be along with the schools like the the. Um, South Carolinas, all those type of schools, the high major schools, I think that HBCUs will be up there too. And there is one guy pretty much left. I think he's the last guy in 2020 left to commit still, and that's McCurmaker. He just dropped his top four, and he obviously had Howard in there. If a guy like his caliber commits to Howard and becomes goes to an HBCU school, what kind of impact do you think that's going to have on the 2021 class and then obviously your class as well? I think that's going to have a big impact because players going to realize that you know, it's okay to go to an HBCU school. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of players fear that they're not going to get drafted from an HBCU school because, you know, very few players have been drafted from one. Mm-hmm. 
and it's kind of a new experience for some people. So I think that when they watch him go to college, if he goes to Howard and he does really good at Howard, then people will start to come in and they'll be like, yeah, you can really make it out of an HBCU. So I think that would be a great thing. It would change the game a lot. You personally now, four or five months ago, before all this stuff really became a trend, was it as appealing as it is now to you or has, has the past couple of months really made HBCU a lot more realistic destination for you potentially down the road? To be honest, you know, I, I really just now started getting work on the HBCUs. Mm-hmm. A couple months ago, I wasn't really, you know, thinking about one. But then I started to realize that it's, 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 it's a possible chance that, you know, it's a D1 school and it can really change a lot of things. And with all the social just, injustice going on, that plays a role too. So it really opened my eyes the last couple of months. So I'm just now starting to, you know, open up to that. That's awesome. And let's talk about your high school season. I mean, we know there hasn't been much AAU stuff going on right now, but your high school legacy has been making moves, adding two big time players, Charlie Loaded Team and Bryson Keon. How excited are you for this upcoming season now? I'm very excited for this upcoming season. I think we should be top 10 in the country next year. I think we should win a lot of games, a lot of games. We shouldn't lose at all. I think that we're going we're gonna to bring in some new pieces. But as of right now, we already have a great squad. I think we can, I think we can make a big noise and big splash. And we should be a household name for the next 10 years. That's huge. And you just talked about... Obviously, adding this much talent in, that's four, five, including you, obviously, top high major players. How do you kind of plan to get that chemistry and work together, even with not knowing when you guys can actually get back to school and all that happening? Well, we already have a close bond already. Me and Ike, me, Ike Cornish, Jacoby Wright, we all have a, we all have a um, close bond already. We've been living with each other for a year now. Mm-hmm. We've been playing together. We, we push each other. But with Keon coming in the house also, and Bryce, I feel like we're gonna have a great bond too because we're very welcoming people, and we love we love to we love to build a great chemistry. We never we never fight a bigger, so I think we're gonna have a great we're gonna have a great chemistry. So we should go a long way with that too. And I've had most of those guys on already, and the big thing they all talked about was they made it a priority to make sure they're committed prior to this upcoming season. All four of them already committed going to the schools that they know they know where they're going to school at, knowing that their focus is gonna be heavily just on the season finishing up this year, how much of an impact will that have on the team? That'll have a lot of impact because that'll give opportunities for kids on our team that are not committed yet to when they when the college coaches come to see them in practice, they'll also get a chance to see them. Mm-hmm. So, the, and that will also help me too. So I think that, that w- that's a big thing for our team. And I'm glad they made that decision. And I'm glad they made the right decision for them. And you personally now, you're coming off your sophomore season. Had another solid year, but this is going to be another breakout year for you, obviously playing at a much higher stage. What do you expect for yourself this upcoming year? This upcoming year, my stats, my stats are going to be higher. Mm-hmm. Um, I, expect, I expect my ranking to go up, even though I don't focus on rankings. I expect the, the naturally to grow, go up because I'm going to produce a lot. And as the more games we win, the more, the more um, national, national attention we get, and I think that that will work in my favor and the program's favor, but the program first because, you know, we have to win games too. And last year you were kind of still in a limited role as, as well. You obviously put up almost six points per game, four rebounds a game. What average do you think you're capable of putting up next year? I think I'm able to put up maybe 14 to 15 points up a game, mm-hmm. 10 rebounds. You know, I'm just working on getting in shape so I can be able to run a whole game and hustle for my team. So I think I should be averaging around 15 to 16 points and 10 rebounds and a couple blocks. Keon was on a little bit ago and he talked about, obviously it's not been the same as his old Hillcrest kind of school where they're traveling every day, but you guys still get to go out of state. We'll have some big tournaments. Obviously if the Corona stuff doesn't affect that stuff, but you guys get to go to these big tournaments. How excited you start playing in all these national kind of level tournaments? I'm very excited because it will give me an opportunity to show what I'm capable of doing against elite competition. Mm-hmm. And as, 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 as a little kid, I always wanted to play against the best. So it would really give me an opportunity to play against the best players in almost every class. And 
show 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 them where I stand and earn that respect. One of the big reasons why it's going to be a huge high school season for you is because you didn't obviously have AU at least that much of AU this year. I believe you were going to also run with Team United this year. Well, how excited were you to possibly be able to play with them this year? I was very excited. I was very. I thought if we would have had an EYBL season, I would have been top twenty because I've been really working on my game, and I, I've been trying to do everything to separate myself from a lot of people in my class. So I just just been working. I I really wanted to play this season, but unfortunately it didn't happen for me. But I'm um, getting ready for next season, and I'll come back better than ever. So what's the word? Do you guys think you guys going to get a tournament to win this year, or do you think it's not going to happen? Uh, I know um, Team United is not no longer doing any AAU events. So, no. so they're not going to do any AAU. But they are going to do a couple combines. Mm -hmm. They're going to do some combines so college coaches can watch and get some exposure for some kids, college coaches. But besides that, but besides that, they said they're not doing any AAU basketball right now. Gotcha. And for you, I know a big part of your life is your faith. Your dad's also a pastor. I mean, what was it like kind of growing up in this? And how about your faith of God? It was it, basketball always been been my been my thing. I always been tall. So like I always pray to God that I'll grow <laughs> and that I'll blossom. Mm -hmm. So God's given me just giving me the body and everything that I needed to to be where I'm at now and continue to get better. So, you know, he's he's the first thing in my life. And I really do thank him for everything he's doing for me right now. Absolutely, man. As I said, your dad is a pastor. What was it like kind of growing up in a household, having your dad be a pastor? It was, it was very, it was very, it was very, um, it, it was, a, it was a blessing because it really showed me, you know, I seen his, I seen his testimonies and it really showed me that, you know, you can always make it no matter what happens in life. You know, God is very forgiving. God is very forgiving. So growing up watching him was very, it was a very inspiration for me. And it really helped me be not only a man on the court, but off the court. And it kind of taught me maturity and always keep him first and he'll always have your back. As you move forward, you're going to have a bigger and bigger spotlight on you. It's going to be more and more attention. And for you, I know you already like spreading God's word a lot through a lot of your stuff. How do you kind of plan to continue to spread God's word and be the light as you continue to add more and more attention to you? As I get more attention, I feel like when it's all said and done, I'll be, I will be top 20. So when I become, when I become whatever I become within a couple of years, I will spread God's word and I'll make sure everybody knows what my faith is. And I'll make sure everybody knows I'm a child of God. And I hope I influence people to be a child of God, too. That's awesome, man. My last one before I let you go is I can imagine that you want to build yourself a legacy. Well, from what you were able to accomplish on the court, as well as what you were able to accomplish in your community off the court. By the time you step away from this game someday, what do you want that legacy to be? I want to give back to my community. I want to give back to the people who gave to me, which is um, North Augusta. They always give. They always gave to me. I grew up in that area, so I want to give back to them, and I want to make sure my legacy be like I was the legend down here in North Augusta, the one who made it, so that kids know that they can make it too from my area because not a lot of people make it to the league from my area. They always, you know, either they they don't do good in college or they don't make it to the NBA. Or they just go overseas. So I want to be that guy to go to the league and show them that. You know, if you put in that work, you can make it. You keep that first. You can also make it too. Amen, man. Well, I'm definitely excited to see what happens in the next year for you, man. Keep doing your thing, man. I appreciate you taking time to come on, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, man. You're always welcome on, bro. God bless. God bless.